The goal of this video is to show how Altium Designer can be used with mechanical software. So uh, basically the goal is to give you an idea how this works uh, in case you may need it or, or you would like to know actually uh, if it can be useful for you. And uh, Nikolai is going to show us the whole process how this cooperation between Altium Designer and Mechanical Software works. So first I would like to say uh, in this video we are going to use Fusion 360 but there are also other mechanical softwares which can be used and process will be similar, correct? Uh, yes, that, that's true. Hi everyone. Uh, we are currently supporting five mechanical CADs, uh, Autodesk Fusion 360 which is already mentioned, uh, next one is SOLIDWORKS, uh, next is Autodesk Inventor, next is PTC Creo, and the last one, but not least, obviously, is Siemens NX. And we are planning to support more in future. Okay, so let's have a look how this works. So we are in Altium Designer. Mm -hmm. uh, can we have a look on 3D model of this board? Yeah, yeah, this is a... Arduino board uh, we have uh, taken for our uh, demo. So this is the 3D representation of this board. And uh, yes, we can now uh, start collaborating with the mechanical CAD. So, uh, so what do we need? Uh, first, we need to activate MCAD Code Designer panel in mm -hmm. Awesome Designer. It is uh, available by default uh, unless you uninstall it manually of course mm -hmm. uh, you can always uh, call it if you are uh, on a pcb document you can always activate it by clicking panels mcat code designer it is always here mm -hmm. and, and to use it you need to be using altium 365 or yes uh, code designer uses altium server uh, which in my case is Altium 365 uh, server. It is uh, our cloud solution for uh, organizing the collaboration. Um, and uh, you can also use uh, uh, an uh, enterprise solution. We call it enterprise solution. This is uh, our uh, server, which can be installed uh, behind your corporate firewall. So you can buy it and install it uh, behind your so firewall. So this is used to be well conc or it used to be called Yes, conc correct, conc correct, yeah. correct. Uh, previously, it, uh, well, there were two solutions, uh, Concord Pro and Nexus. Mm -hmm. Now it is uh, all Altium Enterprise solution. Okay. Okay. So when we open this panel, uh, mm -hmm. then I see there are only two buttons, push and pull. Yes, we see, we see, yes, only two buttons, uh, push and pull, push uh, for sending uh, the PCB uh, or the entire multi-board assembly to the mechanical CAD or to be clear to the server. Okay. Uh, and then mechanical engineer will pull that uh, PCB from the server. Okay. And pull, pull for pulling uh, the Maybe PCB. Maybe we'll do pulling from, later. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, sure. So uh, for sending PCB to the server, I simply click uh, push, uh, uh, type, uh, Type a comment, let's say any shell. So this is the description of uh, the of what board. what is yeah. what is yeah, what is being sent. Okay. Uh, for example, when I make changes, I will uh, post uh, some short comment about what exactly was changed. Mm -hmm. It will help my counterpart to understand what exactly was changed and to be prepared for those changes. Okay. Right here, I can share. This PCB, if I keep this uh, flag on, uh, co-designer will then uh, ask me for entering uh, the email of my counterpart. But in my uh, case, I will work under the same account, so I, I don't need to share mm -hmm. with uh, myself. I will just disable it. One important comment, uh, the mechanical engineers should be included into your workspace. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, impossible to work with uh, mechanical engineers who are completely outside. But don't worry about that. They will not have an access uh, to your PCB projects. Uh, you will only have uh, an ability to pull 
the PCB and to make changes and to push those changes back. So they don't uh, need extra license. Uh, yes, at least currently okay. they do not need. They do not need, and uh, this is the situation uh, for uh, Altium 365 cloud solution uh, for on-premise solution for enterprise solution. Uh, Altium MCAT co-designer on MCAT side consumes one uh, floating client license mm -hmm. during the during uh, the time when it works. Okay, so let's press send. I'm curious. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, 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 sure. Yes, uh, e as soon as I click send, co-designer is validating the board, analyzing the the board outline and other stuffs, and uh, now our PCB is uh, pushed to the server. So we can see the information here, latest from ECAD, uh, and my initial push is here, and no pull actions in in MCAD done yet. Okay. So we can, uh, yes, we can go to MCAD mm -hmm. uh, Fusion 360 in our case, and to open that board or to pull it uh, here. But first, uh, how are we going to do that? We are going to do that through Altium Co Designer. Uh, which is available here in Altium Code Designer tab, uh, which appears right after uh, I installed Altium Code Designer plugin for MCAD. Okay, how for, do I do that? Uh, for doing that, I need to navigate uh, to altium.com, resources and support, downloads and simply download uh, MCAD Core Designer plugin mm -hmm. from MCAD Core Designer plugin section. I need to choose uh, which plugin do I need to use, choose the version if I, if I want to use some of the previous versions, uh, if necessary to read the installation and management mm -hmm. guidance uh, and, and simply download, then install, and then uh, we will see uh, infusion the the, the 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 corresponding capabilities here. I can open uh, Altium Core Designer by clicking this button. I already logged in. Okay, but, so uh, uh, when you just install it, you need to log in. Yes, yes, uh, you need to log in. Uh, there are several types of login are supported. You can log in by using your Altium account, by uh, using your login and password to that account. You can log in by using your Google account, Facebook account, or log in by using your uh, corporate single sign-on if you, if you are using it. So then, uh, as you can see, uh, I can work with uh, several workspaces. Uh, as you can see, I have, I have a lot. Uh, and uh, the settings are available here for Fusion 360. They are pretty simple. Uh, we can see only this uh, option for filtering uh, small components out, which, by the way, I would strongly recommend you to use for the boards with the large number of components, because in most cases, mechanical engineer engineers do not need to see all those small resistors, capacitors, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. I, I have experienced it may really slow down uh, yeah. if there are too many components, it may slow mm -hmm. down the cuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I, I don't need to to set up that filter for now because mm -hmm. that, that PCB is more or less simple. So we will see everything here. As for the other buttons, uh, so open does the same as this button open. Uh, hole uh, feature uh, creates a, mount a mounting hole on your PCB. Mm -hmm. uh, it just helps to create. You can use the regular hole uh, command, uh, hole feature in MCAD and uh, the result will, will be the same. This is just for the simplicity, for the, for uh, more, this, let's say, discoverability of uh, features. Same for cutout. You can easily create cutout by using cut extrude feature. And uh, one more feature is a pretty useful thing. Uh, mechanical engineers can set up keep out areas right here in MCAD. Uh, next one is so-called uh, text note room. This is uh, a room uh, which is used for transferring any custom requirements uh, in text form. Let's say if we want to set up um, a height limit for some areas, for some board area, we can use this uh, specific uh, feature. 
and uh, set it up. Uh, and then closure exchange, uh, this is, by the way, uh, quite a unique capability of Core Designer. It allows to synchronize the enclosure without, uh, let's say, tricky manipulations with uh, including the parts of enclosure into uh, the PCB assembly, which is, in fact, incorrect. We, uh, this is what people are doing uh, with other types of uh, ECAD MCAD exchange. So basically, you can, once you create the enclosure here, you can import it back to Altium. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You can declare, uh, you can declare uh, the enclosure uh, from your, let's say, device assembly or product assembly. And that enclosure will be declared. It will be linked with the PCB, not included into PCB. Mm -hmm. It okay. will be linked with the PCB and uh, sent back to ECAD. And uh, electrical engineer will see the enclosure there. Will there will be able to do collision checks, uh, to cross section the PCB or PCBs plus enclosure, and so on. It's a pretty, pretty useful thing. And mm -hmm. I, I would. I would strongly recommend to use it as a mechanical engineer. I would strongly recommend to use it. It, it is really helpful for, for both. Uh, all right, uh, let's- and the last uh, button is what? Okay, oh, well, okay, I forgot, sorry. The last button is for uh, showing or hiding uh, so-called advanced geometry. This is uh, for uh, bringing uh, the representation of copper and uh, silk screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for hiding it, uh, which is also quite useful, but not for all the cases. Uh, we will we will we will uh, see it uh, at, at the demo. Okay. Uh, and okay, let's uh, simply open that uh, PCB. It is uh, here. It is uh, just uh, pushed. I see my comment, mm -hmm. which I just post initial push. I see the picture. Uh, which shows uh, the PCB I want to to bring here. And once I click OK, co-designer will ask uh, for the place for saving uh, the PCB. I would like to create a new project now. Let's call it uh, demo 0607. I wouldn't use uh, name demo, use something else. Uh, demo uh, looks or, like marketing uh, name. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let's Project. call it de uh, device. Okay, uh, that's much nicer. De de device 0607. <laughs> Great. Uh, you know, then it looks like marketing video, and that's not what I would like to create. This video is supposed mm -hmm. to be useful and give people idea. This is how yeah, you can okay, use okay. it. Okay, <laughs> okay. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, so device or six or seven. Uh, I will keep the say the name of uh, the PCB project, uh, which uh, I set up when I created a project on Altium uh, server and mm -hmm. locally in Altium Designer. I, I will not change it, but if, if necessary, it, it can be changed here. And uh, once I click save, uh, Fusion 360 will start building the PCB I'm here. Curious. Okay, let's see. Code designer will first uh, bring uh, the components. Um, in our case, uh, it will be more or less fast because uh, all the models of components are uh, stored in my library, shared with my team, with my uh, F360 uh, CD team. Uh, but uh, for the first transferring and the first for the first building, it will take more time to download the models from Altium 365 server to convert them from Parasolid format, which is used internally, to the native uh, format of MCAD, and uh, for saving them on the server, on Fusion 360 server, in our case, and okay. uh, sharing them accordingly. But it's done automatically, yeah? So uh, basically, yes, yes, yes. basically, this is because if you have large board, and you make some changes, you don't have to always import all the components. You only import them once, and uh, in the next import, uh, basically only maybe additional or new components will be imported. So 
so Correct. synchronization Correct. is faster. Correct, yes. With every new board transferred, your transfer is faster. Okay, and uh, at, you mentioned the components are then uh, in Fusion, or uh, how does it work? So in Fusion, uh, you have your own library of uh, 3D oh, correct. Or components. Correct, I will show it uh, as soon as co-designer finishes building the board itself. So you see uh, co-designer already drilled uh, the holes. Let's wait for a second. Uh, let's wait for co-designer and let's allow co-designer to finish building the board. I think it is closer. Okay, so now the build, uh, the, the board uh, is already built, so all the holes uh, are drilled, and now co-designer just uh, created the representation of copper as, as, as the last uh, copper and silk screen as the last step. Mm -hmm. And the, we see ladies from ECAD, my initial push, and uh, we see the PCB itself here. I promised to show where the components are stored. They are stored in libraries, assets, in ECAD components. This is the predefined folder for the collaboration with uh, Altium uh, server. If I uh, go inside, I will see the set of uh, components which are already transferred and uh, stored here. As you can see, there, there is quite a big number of uh, components which were transferred uh, previously and uh, saved in Fusion 360 library and and just used uh, as I as I explained. What what if uh, you have a, a same component name on two different boards? Uh, is there going to be like collision or it will be renamed or? If it is physically the same component, the same ECAD component, it will be just used, mm -hmm. not duplicated. But uh, if uh, you have a component. Uh, if you have physically different components with the same name, co-designer will handle that situation. Co-designer will uh, add a suffix. Uh, in other words, co-designer has its own, let's call it uh, version control system. Uh, and uh, co-designer also controls uh, the hash of uh, mm -hmm. components. So it can recognize that the components yes. are different. Correct. Correct. It can recognize. By the way, as for the naming of component models, uh, co-designer uh, sets it up uh, according to the settings. This, by the way, this is my uh, workspace. I'm in the workspace. If I go to admin settings in my workspace and navigate to MCAD co-designer section, I see the naming of uh, component mm -hmm. models uh, section or option here. I can change it. Uh, so for now, it, uh, it, it says that uh, the name of component starts with footprint name, then uh, uh, it has component ID. Mm -hmm. Plus, by the way, there is a hidden part, always a hidden part, uh, the revision of component. Mm -hmm. It is always included. As I said, we have our own, let's say, versioning, uh, version control system. And if I uh, want to use uh, a custom component property, let's say part number, I can uh, simply set it up and uh, and click save and then my uh, models will uh, will be named according to what I just set mm -hmm. up. They, the name will start with the part number mm -hmm. uh, parameters stored uh, for the components mm -hmm. in ECAD library, in Altium Designers mm -hmm. library. That's it uh, for the naming. Let's go back to our PCB assembly. Next thing I promised to show you is uh, copper. The, the okay. ad so-called advanced geometry. Now the, the, there's a lot of geometry. I can simply hide it and show it in a bit different manner. It is here. It is always here. Just uh, open the board the board part within within your board assembly and uh, show top copper, for example, you will only see the, let me switch back to the assembly context. So you will only see the top copper. If you want to, to see bottom copper, 
you can turn it uh, and and see it by the way the copper is represented by the vector graphics in other words you can even uh, you see you can even uh, extrude the the physical representation the physical 3d representation of copper here and by the way uh, this way of representing copper uh, in free, in Fusion 360 is, di is different from uh, what we are doing in other MCADs. In other MCADs, we have uh, two ways. Uh, one way is bringing uh, just the bitmap picture, so-called decal. Uh, and uh, the second option is uh, building the precise model of uh, Track. of all the layers of, mm -hmm. of, of copper plus um, plus uh, interlayer barrels uh, for vias and mm -hmm. uh, and mounting holes mm -hmm. okay i don't need i don't need it uh, now but i may need it uh, i may need to to see the copper for some purposes uh, when you move components for example. yes yeah, for, mm -hmm. for when i move components when i want to to create uh, new mounting holes, uh, for example, if I want to drill to to drill an additional hole somewhere here, I need to know if uh, there is a copper mm -hmm. uh, here, and uh, if uh, my uh, hole will collide with that uh, copper or not. So, uh, okay. Uh, so let's. But, uh... Let's create an enclosure or something. That's what normally mm -hmm. we yeah, would yeah. use. Yeah, uh, By the way, uh, by the way, uh, we agreed. So just a uh, short, short introduction. We agreed to follow quite an unusual flow. In most cases, in most cases, uh, the mechanical enclosure dictates the constraints, dictates the available space, dictates the space limit, dictates the position of mounting holes, and so on and so on. But what if you have uh, a PCB which uh, already exists, which which which, yeah. which is already created, which is in fact a standard PCB, like in our case? What what to do? And now we do show what to do in that case. Uh, all right, let's start with uh, creating uh, our, uh, let's say, device assembly. And uh, let me navigate back to my uh, uh, project folder uh, where it is. It is uh, here, if I remember correctly. So, yes, this is uh, my PCB. And uh, what I can do now, just create a new design uh, this is my device assembly let's save it uh, save it right here let's call it uh, device uh, 06071 okay so this is the project uh, where we will put the parts from the enclosure and the box yeah, exactly. together and, and the pcb itself correct okay. uh, so this is my device assembly and uh, of course, I, I need to, to bring Put my PCB mm -hmm. into, into this assembly first. Uh, I don't need to, to move it, to adjust it to other parts because uh, I will build the enclosure around this assembly. So the default uh, placement uh, uh, to the assembly origin is okay for me in, in this situation. All right, uh, what else do I need to do? I need to start building a new component of my device. Uh, I do prefer to use external components because I uh, I would need to share them, to save them separately, to reuse them mm -hmm. maybe, uh, who knows. So I would uh, create this component, let's call it uh, case bottom and the second portion will be case top mm -hmm. uh, case bottom so All basically right. we are creating a separate file for the bottom exactly, part of our exactly so separate component for mm -hmm. a separate component in our device assembly for the bottom part and let's start uh, building it uh, i will simply start with uh, xy plane uh, let's create let's say um, basement of our uh, bottom part mm -hmm. 
and uh, I just created the initial contour and uh, I will apply the dimensions. Uh, the dimensions will depend on the size of the hole. I know that this size is uh, 3.2 millimeters, which means that I will use uh, 2.5 millimeters uh, self-tapping screws, most probably. And uh, I will uh, define this uh, space, this dimension, according to the diameter of uh, my fasteners uh, and uh, according to the space to the offset which I need to keep uh, and according to the size of the elements which uh, are going to be used for fixing uh, mm -hmm. for securing so, so we will just make it a little bit bigger so we yeah, can yeah, screw so the top just and bottom a little, together. exactly just a little bit bigger okay. uh, same here uh, let's say seven millimeters and uh, here I think uh, two millimeters will be enough one for the wall and for one millimeter is an offset okay. two millimeters let's apply fillets make it nicer of, uh, yeah, of three millimeters here here and here Okay. Uh, and now I have uh, the sketch and I can now uh, finish the sketch and start building the first uh, portion, the first uh, extrusion of my uh, bottom part, uh, not from the profile pl plane, but with some offset. I would like to, let's say, set up uh, minus four millimeters offset. Oh, it's too much. Oops, too, too much. So it's minus four millimeters. And uh, one side distance uh, and the distance of minus three millimeters mm -hmm. distance. I can uh, see how it's going to be. And uh, in my opinion, five millimeters would be better just for being on the safe mm -hmm. side. Uh, all right, uh, the first uh, extrude is done. Uh, then uh, let's create uh, the standoffs. The standoffs, yes, the elements uh, where uh, the PCB will be placed on. Uh, let's start with the new sketch. Come on, uh, let's simply create uh, two holes, uh, one of the diameter of uh, two millimeters uh, for uh, screw. for screw itself yes for screw itself because as i said the screw is going to be 2.5 millimeters and the second one uh, considering the wall thickness i would say five millimeters mm -hmm. uh, would be good enough and uh, i need obviously to make Okay. To make to make it concentric to the geometry, so it will be associated with the geometry of the PCB. And uh, if I change the location of hole, the location of uh, standoff uh, will follow it. Idea I, I, ideally, yeah. We can we can uh, we can check it. We can check it. Oops. Uh, okay. Copy and paste. Uh, paste it uh, to the new position and uh, make it uh, concentric as well. Concentric with this specific hole. Cancel it again. Uh, paste one more time. Move it here. Uh, apply constraint again. And this is also to show how easy it is actually. To yeah, it is to it, yeah it, it is pretty easy. Mm -hmm, I agree. And make it concentric. Uh, okay. I think everything is done with the sketch itself. Let's now create the standoffs themselves. I would start with uh, choosing uh, the elements mm -hmm. of uh, sketches. Uh, 
and as for the distance of course i need to choose the bottom face of uh, my pcb mm -hmm. uh, I, I see it here uh, distance to object uh, and i simply pick mm -hmm. the the face and i see that it looks like everything is fine with the standoffs uh, okay done uh, with the standoffs let's create uh, holes uh, for securing the top part of mm -hmm. uh, the enclosure uh, relatively to the bottom part uh, obviously i need to use counter bore hole with uh, three millimeters diameter internal diameter and uh, if i remember correctly 4.4 millimeters uh, diameter of the screw head mm -hmm. so i need to set up uh, five millimeters diameter mm -hmm. here and simply adjust it uh, to the center of this arc it is pretty pretty simple okay uh, once again it is uh, very simple to to create it in uh, this manner because fusion remembers the settings and i don't even need to create any type of uh, any type of uh, let's say complex sketch mm -hmm. uh, with the patterns and so on and so on uh, all right uh, everything is fine with uh, the holes and let's save the material a little bit let's create a shell uh, entity here okay uh, and this is the bottom part of our box yes yes this is this is the, the bottom part in fact in fact uh, in fact it is done we finished designing it and now we can proceed with the top part it is also pretty simple mm, I, uh, I have a question, wait, I have oh, question. Okay, okay 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 so what i would like to do now i would like to work a little bit with altium and then mm -hmm. we will design the top part so let's say a uh, mechanical engineer did all this and maybe a uh, mechanical engineer will need to make some adjustments because i don't know uh, they need to move the mounting hole or maybe adjust the shape of the board how this could be done and then transfer to altium mm -hmm. Okay, so imagine imagine mechanical engineer uh, sees that there is an additional space. Why don't we why don't we use this space, right? All right. Uh, well, first uh, we need to start editing the PCB. board part, mm -hmm. the the board the uh, the board assembly. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, then, if we want to change the sketch of the board part, uh, we can do it. Uh, we can uh, navigate to sketches and start editing board outline sketch it is so that special layer of uh, what we have to edit uh, yes exactly mm -hmm. so we need to edit uh, the board outline, board outline sketch mm -hmm. which is uh, inside of the board mm -hmm. part the okay. board part which is inside of the board assembly mm -hmm. so uh, what we can do here all right let's uh, simply remove this portion completely and uh, let's simplify our sketch uh, okay let's apply let's say one millimeter fillet mm -hmm. here and uh, done as soon as it's done uh, come on yes oh, it is nice. it, it is now redrawn it, well it is pretty simple so uh, it is pretty simple for uh, making changes to the placement of hole i need to find this hole in the history of uh, of uh, feature building mm -hmm. it is it is here the history infusion in particular it mm -hmm. is here so i need to uh, i have this uh, this specific hole selected now again my uh board mm -hmm. i can activate the board part again but in fact i can do in context of this board assembly the the key thing is that i need to find this uh, specific hole mm -hmm. this one you see in, because in there the are history. these three lines yeah yeah okay yeah correct 
and now I start uh, started editing uh, the placement and the parameters of this hole. I can change the size, I can change the placement, I can use the reference, I can uh, make the references to the edges of the PCB. But uh, for for the simplicity, let's move it mm -hmm. uh, just simply manually here to to this position just to just to demonstrate uh, the the flow and the effect and as we can see our standoff uh, is uh, not following mm -hmm. the placement of uh, or the location of this mounting hole this is because uh, we need first to finish editing our PC, our pcb mm -hmm. part itself and then uh, Fusion 360 will notify us that uh, we need to update the design in the assembly context. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to switch to assembly context uh, for this oh, case. Bo ca ca cool. Yes, for this uh, for this case bottom part. And you see now, Fusion 360 just updated the geometry according to the changes made in that context in the different mm -hmm. uh, uh, component of my uh, device assembly. Cool. Uh, well, I, all I need to do to finish editing in place. Uh, and uh, Now let's send it, these it, changes to PCB layout engineer. All right, so let's send it. I do prefer to save uh, everything before making something new. All right. Uh, now it is, uh, come on, yes, now it is saved and uh, for, okay, let's wait for a second. Uh, and for sending it back, uh, I simply need to uh, bring my co-designer back. Now you see, we, don't, we do not see pull and push buttons. This is because uh, we switched from the PCB assembly itself to the device. Mm -hmm. And, and co-designer does not know currently uh, which PCBs are included uh, into this device assembly. Mm -hmm. I need to click this button, recognize mm -hmm. PCBs, and co-designer will start working from the context of the device assembly because uh, I, I understand. Case, we we had to identify that uh, this project is go is using the board. What we would like to synchronize exactly. Okay. If we if we had let's say two or three PCBs in our device assembly, uh, we would uh, press the same button uh, recognize and co-designer would provide us the choice. Uh, we would see uh, the drop down here mm -hmm. and uh, would select the PCB which we are currently working on. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, all I need to do now is wait. Wait, before I push this board back to the server, I want to specify uh, the enclosure or to register or to declare the enclosure. So I see no enclosure parts here. Oh, so we are going in, to in also the, in, import in the this, bottom part yes, of yes, the enclosure. Yes, okay, yes, cool. this is what, what I wanted to do right right away at, at this step. All I need to do is to select the, the part of enclosure and to click this button. Code designer will uh, now again validate the design where we'll analyze the structure we'll open the pcb assembly in the background uh, and we'll register the part of enclosure in the pcb uh, assembly it will take some time because opening uh, the uh, assemblies in the background mode always takes time. Code designer will notify us when when this operation is is done. Let's wait for. But I, I see the uh, the enclosure part is all is already here. It mm -hmm. is already included into the set of parts, uh, which are going to be sent back to ECAD and uh, notified me that uh, the definition of PCB enclosure was successfully updated. And so on and so on. So now I can finally push it back. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, put a comment uh, mounting hole uh, location is changed. Uh, the board shape uh, board shape is changed. Uh, changed and uh, what else and the enclosure enclosure 
part uh, is in Included. So, okay. Well, the, the, the right term would be declared, but anyway. And as soon as I click send, Code Designer will push my uh, design, including the definition of I'm enclosure. Going, I'm curious what it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, to EGED. So now it is pushed. And if I go back to Altium Designer, I will see the notification. Oh. Uh, Code Designer shows the notification that there are a uh, new uh, design uh, sent from MCAD. So I see my comment, mounting hole location is changed, board shape is changed, and closure part is included. And uh, as soon as I click pull, I will see the list of changes here. Uh, I can uh, select uh, them all and co-designer will show all, uh, all the changes. As you can see, uh, the PCB outline or the PCB itself, <clears throat> the bare board is shifted a little, a little bit and uh, the part of enclosure, which is represented in this hatched form is also shifted. This is because uh, this PCB was initially imported uh, from another ECAD. And as you can see, it is put directly into the absolute origin, which is, by the way, a bed style. Mm -hmm. This is a bed style of the, of the PCB design, uh, let's say, uh, at least because uh, these two components, these two connectors, USB connector and uh, power supply connector are, in negative are, space. are placed currently, yes, partially in the negative coordinates, which is uh, quite, a, quite a wrong, quite a wrong practice. So but, normally, well... And I always do it this way. When I start new PCB, I always start somewhere away from Co zero, zero, absolute correct. position. Correct, correct. And by the way, for imported boards, uh, it would be better to move do so-called move board. Uh, it is called move board command, but in fact, co-designer does the same. Co -designer, it will correct it automatically. Co-designer, yes, corrects it because co-designer dislikes it as well <laughs> for for its own reasons. Uh, if so, as soon as I click apply, Code designer uh, made that move board. As you can see, the origin, the ECAD origin uh, is staying at the previous position. It is here. And additionally, code designer, by the way, this is quite an interesting case because code designer uh, uh, placed its own origin. We mm -hmm. can see it uh, in PCB properties uh, in uh, grids. So mm -hmm. code designer created so-called MCAD coordinates mm -hmm. grid and uh, put this mark uh, mm -hmm. into the into the corner. Uh, and if I switch to the 3D mode, I will see my so cool. part, the, the, part, the part of enclosure. If I, if necessary, I can uh, obviously change the transparency and to see transparent if i need to to see the bottom part of the pcb i can obviously hide the, this part of enclosure and by the way as we can see the board shape is changed uh, the position of uh, oh, mounting oh, yeah. hole is changed and the obviously the standoffs uh, are transferred uh, correctly uh, so uh, this is how changes work if if we make changes here, they obviously will be change, will be transferred and applied in MCAT. Okay, okay. In the, I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> I would but like to see. I it just, next, I just wanted, next. I just wanted, to, I just wanted to um, to uh, highlight or to underline one important thing. Okay. Uh, if we change the board outline here. Uh, code designer will fortunately or unfortunately redraw it in uh, MCAD and Fusion 360, which means that uh, the internal identifier and identifiers of edges will be changed and our constraints and our dimensions uh, which were created relatively to the PCB itself oh. will, will be broken. Mm -hmm. So this is why I would strongly recommend you and always when possible recommend you to make changes to the PCB shape and to the position of mounting holes in MCAD. Mm -hmm. 
it is better to do to do the the, the changes like I just mentioned mm -hmm. right there. And by the way, it is simpler to do to do mm -hmm. the changes there and uh, and uh, making changes in uh, in MCAD, uh, you will always be able to associate your geometry with the geometry of your enclosure, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty important for the mechanical mm -hmm. design. So basically what you are saying, uh, it's much useful to do the uh, uh, mechanical changes in PCB in mechanical software because you can associate some objects, uh, mechanical objects on PCB with your enclosure and then everything will be automatically moved. But if you make exactly. the changes in PCB layout software, then the association is broken and you have to move it then manually. Yeah, yeah. Control. Then then you will need to restore them manually. Mm -hmm. It will be not a disaster. Obviously, uh, the geometry will not be broken. The only problem is that you will need to restore, to, yeah, to restore to those it. those constraints, dimensions uh, manually. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, so now we are in situation when, for example, mechanical engineer can work in parallel with uh, mm -hmm. PCB layout engineer. So let's say the mechanical engineer uh, will continue working on the top part, top part of this enclosure, mm -hmm. and uh, and the PCB layout engineer will maybe move some components or do something else. So let's first let's continue on the top part of this, and then we will make some changes in PCB, and we will okay. synchronize everything together. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, for doing that, I obviously need to create uh, a new component here, uh, also external. Let's uh, call it uh, case top, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, located here, just checking. Okay. And uh, now I simply can uh, pick the top face of uh, the bottom part and uh, create uh, as, as oops, come on, sorry, and create a sketch, create a new sketch right here. And uh, then uh, proceed with uh, building the top part. Uh, I prefer to use project command because it is pretty simple in, in our current situation. I do project the contour and the holes, uh, but I don't need these holes now. So I will simply delete the corresponding circles in this sketch. By the way, I can use this specific small circles, but it's for, for me, it's simpler to uh, to remove them. Uh, okay, uh, so this is uh, the, the main contour. Then let's uh, build an offset uh, for the wall uh, as uh, as uh, as our wall mm -hmm. with the thickness of uh, one millimeter, and uh, let's uh, create the elements for screws. For, yes, yes, for uh, securing the screws and for securing the top part relatively to the bottom one. For doing that, uh, I simply need to create uh, this circles. And uh, to create uh, the internal circles uh, with the di diameter of uh, two millimeters, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, two millimeters for 2.5 millimeters self tapping screws. All right, one more circle here, two millimeter, one more circle here, and finally. One more circle, the two millimeters of diameter here. And uh, now I need to remove uh, non-necessary elements from the sketch. B4, five, six. I think I never use this feature. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, Six, one, two, three, four, 
five, six. Mm -hmm. And now we are actually ready. Ready to go with uh, creating the extrusion. So our main extrusion is almost built, almost done. Uh, I need to adjust the mm -hmm. height of the enclosure uh, with the height of the components. So I can see them here. Okay, let's keep uh, 20 millimeters uh, height of this uh, extrusion. And finally, Finally, let's build uh, the topmost uh, part right at the top of, of this one. Let's use just zero offset uh, feature enough. Uh, and let's simply build one more simple extrusion with including all the Oh, I, I never used chess, zero chess, offset chess, feature. Chess, uh, I it is, you, 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 yes, it is, it is, yes, yes, it is uh, sometimes useful than using more, even more useful than using uh, projection because projection creates uh, some extra graphics mm -hmm. usually. So it is pretty simple. In some cases, it is useful to use projection. In some cases, it is useful to use uh, offset. All right, mm -hmm. our housing is uh, almost done. What I want uh, to do is to make it uh, transparent or half transparent, just in order to uh, simplify the design. Okay, so let's uh, apply the, the glass appearance. Uh, and by the way, what else I want to, to do is to connector. create a yes, yes, to, to create a slot for connectors, for op, for uh, the ability to connect the the cables and the corresponding connectors. Uh, okay, so this is just super simple opening. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it is the the simplest uh, the simplest opening just for just for showing the the idea and by the way it, it will be quite functional and let's okay, okay. So... all right it, uh, isn't it bro ah, okay ah okay and extrusion does matter on which distance uh, so right as soon as I finish editing it uh, in place, I see it uh, more or less fitting, <laughs> fitting into into the idea of my of my design. Again, if I need uh, to put uh, the screws, I always uh, can do that. If I need again to to see the representation of uh, copper and uh, and silk screen, I can uh, uh, turn it on and off at, at any time. And uh, now, it's uh, if we don't want to make any other changes, uh, if you don't, if we don't need to to uh, move, uh, let's say, one of connectors, uh, we can simply register this uh, new. Uh, top part. Uh, what I would do, what I would do, mm -hmm. let's, uh, so let's uh, go back into situation that mechanical engineer was working mm -hmm. on this top uh, part of the enclosure, mm -hmm. but in the same time, the uh, PCB layout engineer oh, was okay. doing some mm -hmm. changes. So now okay. let's go back to Altium and let's, okay. let's say he moved a connector or something, he or she. Uh, Connector. Okay, yeah. hey, this one or which one? Which one do you want to move? Okay, uh, we can move the power. Yeah, connector. this one didn't look like very little let's bit of space. That, that the power connector. Of course, we will violate the, yeah. the electrical rules now, but uh, just for 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 the test purposes. Okay. Uh, obviously, of course, we we uh, violate it, and uh, Altium designer tells us that the rules are violated. But for for uh, showing the idea, 
uh, how uh, the changes in MCAT site will reflect the changes made in ECAD, uh, we can we can do this. Uh, we can revert, by the way, them at any time. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so PCB layout engineer made these changes, and now mm -hmm. uh, we are going to import this uh, new board into our enclosure, and mechanical engineer has to adjust the enclosure. Okay. And adjust the enclosure according to new the position to the, to the to the new position of this connector, okay. right? Uh, so let's let's, uh, let's simply push it. Uh, uh, so the location of uh, the power connector power supply. I'm curious what's going to happen. Changed. Uh, <laughs> Codesigner will simply change it. Uh, and it is, by the way, this is a pretty simple case because we haven't made changes to the PCB design itself. Uh, all the tricky situations are appearing when people are doing uh, changes to the PCB design simultaneously. Then they need to agree which changes uh, should be accepted and which changes should be rejected mm -hmm. on both sides. Uh, but in our case, it is pretty simple. So now it is uh, again validated and uh, sent uh, to MCAD. Let's see what uh, happens here. Uh, Code designer. Don't we now... need to save this, or or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Well, we can. Uh, save I mean, it. save the fusion uh, because no, I think save we the fusion. Uh, well, I all. Well, we can we can save it at any time. It, it's okay. not uh, related to the Important interaction the with uh, ah, okay. yes, to, to the import of change. By the way, yes. Now, uh, you see, code designer uh, notifies me. Code designer notifies me in both places, uh, uh, in uh, the native uh, Fusion interface, uh, because I may keep uh, the code designer panel hidden. So this is why we saw that notification there as well in Fusion. Mm -hmm. But uh, I see it here with my comment, the location of the power supply connector has changed. And uh, if I I'm going pull, to log on the enclosure, I'm curious if it's going to move together. With let's, the let's see, I'm also pretty curious. Uh, so now we see uh, what changes are going to be made by code designer. If I click this, mm -hmm. uh, this specific line, this specific position, code designer, shows me the preview of changes. Mm -hmm. If I had the height parameter, the component height parameter set up in ECAD, code designer showed, uh, showed me uh, the, the box, mm -hmm. the bounding box. Uh, the, but now, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, all the components have uh, zero mm -hmm. uh, height parameter uh, uh, set up in uh, ECAD. Uh, so the board origin, the representation of board origin uh, is changed in ECAD uh, because uh, That's the, when board the, board was, was the board, moved. Uh, board was shifted mm -hmm. and you will see the result here. Co-designer shows the electrical origin here in MCAD, not only the mechanical origin there in ECAD, mm -hmm. but uh, co-designer in fact shows both. Just in order to help uh, mechanical engineer to understand where the electrical origin is, because mechanical engineer and electrical engineer can discuss, let's say, uh, the position of components in some coordinates, and they will not understand mm -hmm. each other if if they don't understand what the origin mm -hmm. is. And of course, the top and bottom decal in our case, it is called decal, but we know that this is about the copper. Mm -hmm. This is about the copper because uh, it, ha it has to hold. Uh, yeah, 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 because we cut some of the tracks. Yeah, yeah. And the, the copper is changed. Okay, I'm curious. I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the position uh, of component will be successfully changed, uh, but we will need again to force Fusion 360 to change the shape of uh, that uh, opening of that uh, slot uh, because of the assembly context. Mm -hmm. So Fusion will uh, notify us again that uh, something needs to be updated uh, in the assembly context 
this is uh, what I expect to see, but mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. But it's good because then you know what kind of changes exactly, are exactly, done. yeah, yeah, exactly. You really exactly. would, you always would like to know that uh, if some changes are done automatically, you need to be sure you know which were the changes. Mm -hmm. what, what, what what is happening right now uh, you see the Mountain holes uh, mm -hmm. the holes related uh, to Connectors. this power supply connector and uh, co-designer will now redrill them mm -hmm. re rebuild them redrill the holes uh, and uh, you will see those changes as well let's wait for a second or for a minute Okay. okay. Yeah. Done and uh, cutouts and holes. Uh, so everything is uh, being checked and updated. What uh, what is needed to be updated now? And finally, uh, the final step is updating the representation of copper and uh, silk screen. Let's wait. It, it takes some time. Uh, because uh, mostly because of the interactions with the server. Mm -hmm. So every, everything is saved, uh, I mean, with Fusion 360 server, because everything is saved on uh, Fusion 360 server. And as I said, the last step is processing copper changes. Um, I hope everything will be fine. Just crossing my fingers here. <laughs> Come and on, it's almost on. done. Uh, basically, these are all the situations what I wanted to see. I know there will be probably situations, as you mentioned, sometimes there may be collisions, but I guess you can accept some changes uh, or you can just decline them. Yeah, and... you can reject. Uh, by the way, we uh, didn't reject uh, any of the changes, but if, if, necessary, if necessary, of course, you can reject. And of course, you can revert to the previous version. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, by the way, why your comment about saving the revision of PCB was pretty re pretty reasonable. <laughs> so we can go I, agree. I, I agree. It's better to it's better to save on both. By, oh, by the way, on both sides. Okay. Uh, I see there is the uh, I icon. icon. And, yeah, it is expected. This is what I expected to see. And we see both contexts. Uh, let's start with the the bottom. I don't know, by the way, what's going to be changed here. I guess the position of mounting holes, but I don't care much about it. I I, I do care about this, uh, this, the, this slot, yes, this opening. Let's uh, switch, and ideally, ideally <laughs> yes, we, yes, we see, yes, we see, <laughs> yes, we see that uh, it it uh, worked as expected. Uh, so the the geometry of the enclosure uh, was uh, dependent on the connector on position. the on the position of connector. And uh, by the way, this is the pleasure of. Uh, the direct integration uh, because all your uh, dependencies uh, all your associative links and relations are kept alive this is super useful i need to point out this is super useful because otherwise you would need to import or export and import the board and it's then basically like a new object exactly. and it means all the associations with pcb and enclosure are broken and if something is moved on PCB, then always it would need to be adjusted manually, which is extra work. But this way, it's much more useful. And see, yes, uh, I agree. And similarly, with the changes uh, transferred, uh, let's say, to the position of components back from MCAD to ECAD, because normally people are just uh, saying, uh, please move this connector mm -hmm. uh, 2.5 millimeters uh, forward along x-axis <laughs> or something like that. With the changes uh, to the PCB outline, they need to re-export uh, the PCB sketch to DXF. Usually it happens through the DXF. Then to send the, the DXF to electrical engineer, then electrical engineer 
imports that DXF again, adjusts uh, that DXF according to the board origin, and so on and so on. It is pretty pretty annoying and painful. Uh, now it is uh, all automated, and uh, yes, it is pretty pretty efficient. Super uh, cool, super cool, Nikolai. Thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, I think uh, there is one thing what I would like to mention uh, when we were talking about this. Uh, if you would like to use Fusion 360 for this, you need to have the commercial license, correct? You can't. Oh, true. Fusion. Yes, that's true. You need to have uh, the pro subscription uh, of uh, Fusion 360. Because of the formats uh, which Exactly, are okay. exactly, true. And the reason is uh, the usage of parasolid format internally. Uh, however, uh, you can use uh, Fusion uh, 360 personal uh, under the free personal subscription. Uh, if you are using uh, circuit maker, not mm -hmm. Altium designer, this is one more uh, solution provided for hobbyists. Uh, this is actually a simplified Altium designer. You can use uh, circuit maker, and with with circuit maker, you can uh, exchange data in the same way with uh, Fusion 360 personal under license. under personal uh, subscription, correct. Because okay. uh, Circuit Maker uses STEP, not mm -hmm. Parasol. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Nikolai. This is exactly what I wanted to know. You're welcome. You're welcome. Please feel free to to address me if you have an additional any additional questions. And uh, that's everything. Thank you very much for watching this video. By the way, we are preparing some very interesting tutorials, so if you don't want to miss them, hit the subscribe button. If you want, you can also check out our FedEvel online courses, where you will find everything important from basic board design up to advanced hardware design and PCB layout. The link is in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you again. Don't forget to leave your comments and see you next time. Bye!